Okay, hi everyone, this is a tutorial for the dungeon uh, template, I'm going to call it a template. Um, so we open it, open recent, it's called dungeon template. Um, click on that. Okay, so when, when, you when it loads up, it should look like, um, like this. What we've got is we've got grid lines there. If for whatever reason it doesn't, you're not seeing the grid line, that's in view show guides. Sorry, not grid lines, grid lines different, show guides. Okay, the reason we've got guides is, oops, is um, that lets us know the sort of the one inch square block. Okay. So how this works is it's we've got a whole bunch of layers. Okay, so uh, actually I'm just gonna put that off the top. Uh, I'll I'll try and actually let's just save this there. So let's save that. So it should, it should look like it should. So I'm going to be cleaning up some of the names so get rid of the copies and stuff like that. That was just amazing. So what we have is, this is for creating a tileable map. Now it's tileable because the entry and exit points on every map will line up. So what that means is that we can take another map based on this template and place it on the side, that side, top or bottom or we can even rotate the map by 90 degrees and have that top bit, that top bit there clumped onto that bit there. Okay, so how do we do this? It's basically layer based. We start with a floor layer, actually, for this purpose. Let's get rid of the guides. So we've got a floor layer, and that's uh, meant to sort of represent stone, stone tiles. Uh, make it a little bit noisy and again I like it looking dirty. I like things looking a bit grungy, a bit dirty. Um, the shadows layer we will come to. We'll, there's nothing in that at the moment. And then we've got this is the top mask sort of thing. This is a layer wall copy. Again I'm going to change the name of that. And finally most important thing is the constant corridor copy. So how do we use this? Uh, first thing is we make sure that we have all our guide showing using the select tool, the rectangular select tool, or just push R. What we do is we've got snap to grid, so you just have to be in the general vicinity. And what we do is we just start drawing. Now, the first one, um, it'll do that. Now, if I go to make another rectangular selection, it makes the first one disappear. To get around that, what we do is, once we've made the first cut, for want of a better word, hold shift down, you see a plus sign next to that, and from here on in, every other uh, every other selection will be added to the current selection. Okay, so what we do is we draw all our corridors. That one's going right through. Uh, Basically, we flesh out our map. And there we have sort of a map. Okay, obviously you can go into more details and stuff like that. Now, in order to, so it's a good idea to save this. Now, the easiest way to save it, you can go, you can create channels or anything like that, but we're not going to do that. Easiest way I like to do it is fill. So, we select the fill tool, make sure it's on black. Now, we click anywhere inside of there. And once my slow computer does its business, we have the um, outline for the map there. Now one thing I've noticed is that line doesn't actually join up so let's just join that one up there and let's just fix that. Okay so so we can see what we're doing let's now we switch off the um, uh, oops, wrong button. Um, so now we switch off the guides. Okay now let's right click on this layer and alpha for selection, so it selects everything that's black. Okay, now we can hide that layer. Actually, we won't hide that for time being. Select the layer wall copy. Now we're hitting delete. Now it doesn't look like much has happened. Okay, 
But if we get rid of this top layer, the black layer, that's actually looking pretty good. So that's that's sort of a dungeon. So it actually sort of looks a little bit like a dungeon. Okay. Um, now one thing we can we can do. I'm going to um, control Z, which is undo. I'm going to undo that delete. Okay. One thing we can do is we can make things a little bit more ragged. To do this, we go to select, distort. Okay, let's make it a little bit larger. So, uh, so let's go 62 and click OK. So what this is going to do is this is going to distort our selection. And what that will mean is that we can, it'll give the uh, it'll give everything a bit more of a regular look. So now when we go to layer wall copy and hit delete, okay, now it doesn't look like much there, but if we zoom in, so if we zoom in say 100% and we have a look, see how the walls look a little bit sort of jagged, it looks a bit, you know, a little bit like, uh, a little bit more natural. Okay, uh, let's go back to our 9% view. So the final thing we need to do is basically to create some, shad um, some shadows. So to do that, what we're going to do is, now if for whatever reason you made a mistake and you need to get the outline of the path, all we do is right click on this constant corridor copy and go alpha to selection and we'll get it back. Now, bearing in mind that's just the straight lines. So, what we want to do is we want to create some shadows. So, how we do that is we, we've selected the corridors. Let's invert that. So, by inverting, we select everything that's not. So, we do the reverse. Oops. I double click that. So, let's go alpha selection. Select, invert. Okay, so now we've selected everything that's not the path. Go to the layer shadows. Okay, now this is the important bit. Let's grow this a little bit. So where are we? So, um, so we go select, grow. Okay, let's grow the selection. What we're going to do is we're going to grow the selection by 30 pixels. Okay, so 30 pixels. There. Oops, I accidentally clicked it, so let's, I'm going to go edit, undo, okay, so believe it or not, that's it. we've actually grown it by 30 pixels, which you can't really see until, actually it did, obviously didn't work, so let's grow it, so go select, grow, 30 pixels, okay. Okay, see how it's sort of taken that selection and made it wider. Now what we want to do is we want to fill this. Okay, so make sure you're on the, on the shadow one. So hit fill. And let's go back to So sorry, we hit fill. Sorry, my mouse is not being very responsive tonight. And so we've created a little bit of a shadow layer, okay, so um, so when we look at that, it sort of, I guess, looks like we've got a, a bit of a shadow happening. Now to make it more like a shadow, all we do is make sure that's highlighted, filters, blur, Gaussian blur, and let's blur this by, let's try 30 again. Let's see, so let's use the preview to see what that looks like. Okay, let's try 60, let's try. Let's try a little bit more, let's try 60. Okay, yeah, 60 will do it. So now when we have a look at it, okay, see we've added a little bit of blur, it gives it a little bit more substance. And now this map is looking a little bit better, so and that's really it. So what we've done is we've created a uh, tile, a tileable uh, battle map. Each one of these little squarey things is 
uh, an inch wide, so it will sort of be full specification. And we can then bolt these on to anything. So what we do now is we just go File, Export, and then we just export. We'd export it out. Okay, so. Um, and you probably export it as a JPEG and you can take it to a print shop or whatever or print it out on your own printer. Bearing in mind this template is for A3. Uh, I wouldn't save this, if, if you are going to save this, save it as a different name because if you just save over this then you can't really sort of go back and make a new, a new template. Uh, so I guess this will allow people to, um, obviously you can create whatever maps you want, by using the the starting points of these, um, by by using the, the starting points, um, sorry, by using these, by sort of using the starting points there, it means that um, oops, and that one by using these sort of starting points. What it means is that one person can create a map and that map can then be used interchangeably with anybody else's map that has used these templates. Okay, I hope you found this informative.